Hello, everyone. I'm Corinne Davis, your host of The Rundown. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode. I'm so excited because not only is track headed to the national meet, but basketball is also headed into regionals. Let's get into it. On Wednesday night, the Lone Star Conference awarded several of our basketball players with league honors. Starting with the women's team, Carly Motzenbacher was named All-LSC First Team and earned a place on the All-Defensive Team. Nylam Thabach received Second Team honors. Lauren Taylor received a Third Team honor and All-Academic honors. And Holly Stalder earned a spot on the All-Freshman Team. For the men's team, six buffs received LSC honors, starting with head coach Tom Brown. He was named the LSC co-coach of the year for the fourth time during his career in the maroon and white. Prior to the start of the season, Julius Brown had earned the LSC preseason player of the year while also being named LSC player of the year, first team all-conference, and he made the all-defensive team. Damian Thornton received the LSC Newcomer of the Year Award and First Team All-Conference. Zach Tussaud earned the Lone Star Conference Sixth Man of the Year Award. He was the first in program history to ever do so. And the LSC Third Team All-Conference. Larry Wise received a First Team All-Conference spot. Ahmed Mohammed made the All-Freshman Team. And Addison Wallace received the LSC All-Academic Team. Talk about a great way to end the regular season. The women's basketball team took on UT Tyler in the first round of the LSC tournament. Here are the highlights from that game. 8.32 in the second quarter. Lady Buffs trail by 13. Motzenbacher hands it off to Thabach behind the arc. And she hits it. Lauren Taylor charges the free throw line, then kicks it out to Kane on the outside for the three. And it's good. Fast forward to the third quarter, 49-30. UT Tyler. Taylor drives it inside wide open for the jumper. And she knocks it in. In the fourth, the Lady Buffs work the offense. Stalder finds Decker at the top of the key and it bounces in. But the Lady Buffs are unable to catch up to the Patriots. And they fall 75-54. to On the men's side, the Buffs started their run defeating Eastern New Mexico pretty handily to advance to the semifinals. Five Buffs reached or surpassed the double-digit mark. Julius Brown with a team high of 20 points. Larry Wise had 16 points paired with six rebounds. Brock Meshack just behind him with 15 points. Zach Toussaint with 11 points. And Journey Phillips with 10 points. The Buffs won 97 to 66. In the semifinals, WT went head to head with LCU matching up for the third time in a week. The first half was a battle with neither team able to break a significant lead, but the momentum swings ended in WT's favor with a pair of free throws made by Zach Toussaint to send the Buffs to the finals. And that score was 76 to 70 WT. Now for the most important game of the weekend for the Buffs, let's take a look at the highlights from the Lone Star Conference Championship game. Midway through the first half, the Buffs hold the lead 13 to nine. Julius Brown charges inside and the bucket is good. He's also fouled on the play. ACU's Casada goes for the shot. Wise with the rebound and the outlet to Thornton. Thornton coasts it down the floor all the way for the slam dunk. 30 to 18, WT with a little less than four minutes in the half. Brown kicks it out to Tucson for his signature shot. And the Buffs are ahead 33-18. ASU's Casado wide open on the perimeter. He tries for three, putting the Rams ahead 58. To 56. Uh, this one's a nail biter, folks. Six seconds left to go. Buffs down by one. Tucson finds Holt. Holt shoots it back out to Tucson for the game winning shot, securing WT's sixth 
straight LSC championship, 64 to 63. Zach Tucson, our player of the week, had 11 points on the day and earned the LSC tournament MVP. I also want to quickly shout out Julius Brown and Damian Thornton for earning all tournament team honors. And now the Buffs have jumped to the number 13 spot in the NABC poll. Let's touch base on some more conference action. WT Baseball was in full swing this weekend. See what I did there? Nick Marshall stole the show in the series opener, making an appearance for a little over six innings of work. The Wisconsin native allowed three runs on seven hits with three walks and eight strikeouts. Fast forward to Sunday's slugfest, Adam Decker made his presence known at the plate, hitting 487 on the day with three home runs, a double, and nine RBIs. Evan Leibel followed suit, recording two home runs, a double, and four RBIs. Becker was also named LSC Co-Hitter of the Week after his performance this weekend. Here are the scores from that series. And the Buffs walk away from that series 10 and 6 in conference and 12 and 6 overall. Lady Buff softball battled against UT Tyler in a hard fought three game series. Braylon Booth had two home runs and two RBIs on the weekend. Ruby Salzman recorded her 55th career home run. I'm going to say that again her 55th career home run in game two of the weekend. Unfortunately, the Lady Buffs were not able to get into a rhythm and fell to the Patriots, breaking their winning streak. Take a look at the scores from the weekend. The good news is WT Softball picked back up for some midweek action against Midwestern State. Take a look at the updated scores from that series. We're gonna drive over to Fort Smith, Arkansas where the men's golf team competed this week. Freshman Santiago Caride made his mark on day one of the Hard Scrapple Invitational, tying for second with seven birdies, four of which were in the opening round. The Buffs finished with a team score of 21 over par, sitting fourth overall. Freshman Louis Palamo dominated Tuesday, closing the tournament in the second place spot with six birdies and shooting a two over par. As a whole, the Buffs finished fourth overall with a score of 45 over par. There was no women's golf this week, but I want to real quick recognize sophomore Gam Song Persert for being named the LSC Women's Golfer of the Week. After her remarkable performance on the course at the St. Mary's Rattler Invitational a few weeks ago, she led her team to a victory shooting an even par 72 in the first two rounds, followed by a two under par finish in the third round. She was the only golfer who finished under par with a final score of two under 214, which is the third lowest in tournament history. Track and field also did not compete last week, but they did receive 41 all region honors. I think that's a spectacular way to head into the national meet. For the Lady Buffs, the regional tournament will kick off in St. Angelo on Friday at 7.30 p.m. against the Rams. The Buffs will host the South Central Regional Tournament here at the FUB. Tip-off will start on Saturday at 5 p.m. against Texas A&M Kingsville. More to come on those teams as the week progresses. The men's and women's track team will be in Virginia Beach at the NCAA Division II Indoor National Championships. The number two ranked Lady Buffs and the number three ranked Buffs will start competition on Friday and Saturday. 
Lady Buff Softball currently ranked number three in the NFCA coaches poll will hit the road this weekend for some more conference action against Texas women's. The doubleheader will start on Saturday at 3 p.m. and wrap up on Sunday at 1 p.m. Baseball will travel down to Lawton this weekend to compete against Cameron. First pitch will be on Friday at 3 p.m., following a doubleheader on Saturday at 2 p.m. and wrap up on Sunday at 1 p.m. Buff Golf is back on the course next weekend at the Oak Tree Invitational in Edmond, Oklahoma on Monday and Tuesday, March 13th and 14th. There will be no women's golf next week. They will resume play at the end of this month. Tickets for all of these sporting events can be found at GoBuffsGo.com or you can watch them live on the Lone Star Conference digital network. Before the track crew headed to Virginia Beach, I got to hang out with a member on that team who runs very, very fast. Like so fast that she shattered the NCAA Division II indoor time in the 3,000 meter race. She's a two-time All-American and she's already a national champion. That highly decorated athlete is Eleonora Kurtabi. Take a look. So you're from Italy, yep. Turin. Did I, did I pronounce that right? Turin, Turin, yeah, Turin. Italy, yes. which is so cool to me. I've always wanted to go to Italy. <laughs> How did you find WT? I actually didn't find WT in the beginning because I went to the junior college in Iowa mm-hmm. and I moved to from Turin to Iowa Central, mostly because my English was terrible. So I couldn't go to college and I had to go to junior college. And so I was um, in Iowa Central for two years before I came to WT. And I came here actually because uh, two other teammates one actually finished already uh, last fall uh innocent and florence they were here before me and noah and and also also zeke zeke another guy so from them we actually uh, yeah we know about wt awesome well we're happy you're here yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we appreciate you coming out today we're gonna do a new segment we haven't done this before okay. but it's rapid fire questions are you down is it some rapid like fire it. okay <laughs> sweet sweet i'm gonna ask you 10 questions rapid fire first one you ready no let's go <laughs> <laughs> if you were to play another sport what would it be swimming oh uh, have you swam before yes i do love it nice I really like are you a morning person or a night owl I consider myself probably more morning person. Morning. How how early you wake up? Uh, okay, for practice, unfortunately, sometimes six thirty, seven around there. But um, if it wasn't me, probably around eight. I'm always awake around eight. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Hmm. Something hard one. Yeah, fly maybe. Fly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you That's already fly one. on the track, basically. <laughs> so thank you. Run fast. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> what are you jamming to right now? What What's on your playlist? Uh, okay, uh, in the shower, James Blunt, literally, like this morning, James Blunt, like nice. that song. But honestly, everything, it depends on my mood, really, whatever. I love soundtrack for movie. Is okay. When I'm studying, I probably play most of just soundtrack, and nice. it's... I love it. I love orchestra too. <laughs> awesome. I like I like the instrumental songs. Yeah. They're, they're mm-hmm. nice. They're yes. soothing. What's your pre-practice, pre-race routine? Do you have like a snack that you like to eat or... Um, I don't really have a like practice or I mean uh, um I don't even have I don't think I have a routine not really I want to have to do a check out for sure before a race and actually because of coach Zach he made me do it and now I'm like I'm upset with it like I have to check out for <laughs> I need thing. to yeah, yeah <laughs> I really thing. need to, to. and um, I don't think I Mm, I have a like specific food or something. I just prefer doing it some kind of things that I think is not gonna make me feel good during the race. That's it. And this thing for sure is banana. I don't eat banana. <laughs> <laughs> no banana. I've no heard banana. that too. I've, I've heard that too. I don't know why. Just, yeah. I just like uh, I don't trust it. <laughs> but um, I actually uh, slap my legs and my face before I start all the time. There you go. So this is my only things. I think. Okay. That's it. There you go. Now you're yeah. gonna be paying attention to everything. That yeah, you I'm, do I'm trying. Yes. <laughs> um, are you? an explorer or more of a homebody? Uh, 
exploring. Yes, yeah. I would say that. Adventurous. Yeah, yeah. we well, came yeah. from from Italy. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a huge. Yeah, my cave. parents pushed me in a plane, but if I would. Oh, <laughs> how far is that flight? Oh, 20, 12 hours around that. Oh but, my gosh. I mean, just the flight from Turin to no Milan because Turin doesn't go there. But the Milan to US is around like nine hours straight. But all the between the change of the flight, whatever, it's around two, 22 hours. Gotcha. So it's kind of long. It is long. Have you oh, have hey. you been back home since? Yes, no, no, I go every time, twice a year, for Christmas and for the summer. Gotcha, mm-hmm. gotcha. Keep it, keep it short, because that flight is twenty hours. Oh, I hate it so much. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite pizza topping? Ouch! I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a pineapple on pizza kind of? Girl? Oh, please no. Okay, don't me too. That. I was about to say we were. <laughs> I never we were... even taste it, and I think there is a rule in Italy: you can't taste it. Probably. Thank you. Even, yeah. What's your favorite holiday? Oh, another one. I don't know. Probably, I like Christmas a lot, but I prefer summer and oh. hot. So, I don't know. Easter, maybe. Easter? Easter's a great one. Yeah, from it's now on, up. it's going to be Easter. I don't know. Just made it up. <laughs> what is your favorite American dish? Okay, I, w- um, I wasn't really a fan, like, before I came to the U.S. to breakfast, American breakfast. And now, I really like it. Like, so, I would never have thought, like, I was going to eat eggs for breakfast or bacon and now like ah oh, so i like it <laughs> so you guys don't have breakfast in italy or is it no we do but just like in nothing like salt is more like sweet breakfast oh. like probably more croissant more like um which sounds weird I'm a, maybe cake my mom okay. sometimes at night make cake for the morning and um, anyway it's bread most of it's bread but like bacon sausage eggs it's kind of like <laughs> it's so weird and... culture shock You're yes like, yes what? it was but i like it Interesting. <laughs> it just skip lunch after because it's really right it's, it is heavy <laughs> yeah for sure what is your favorite italian dish i love seafood it's probably my favorite like i love seafood so much do you make your own pasta yes i do really you'll have to show me sometime we can do an episode <laughs> where you show me how to make Pasta. That would be so fun. Last question. I didn't want to talk too much about track, but you guys are going to Virginia Beach yes. next week. Mm-hmm. What are you looking forward to most? I am kind of scared because uh, I have, I'm going to have the semifinal for the, uh, I mean, the prelim for the mile and the final for the mile. And after the final for the mile, I have the 3K final. So I'm just going to be focused probably most in the mile as much as I can because I would really want to be good in the mile and if I still have something on me I hope I can still score or maybe even something more in the 3k but yeah mm-hmm. honey well thank you so much for coming and chatting and hanging out with us today thank and we are going to be rooting you on from the 806 we're so excited to watch you compete you've done great this entire indoor season and then during outdoor season I know you're going to do great too thank so. you so much of course That interview was so much fun just getting to learn more about who Elle is off the track. We already know that she is a beast on the track. An important announcement regarding tickets for the South Central Regional Tournament here in Canyon. Saturday's schedule will be split up into two sessions with the arena being cleared following session one. Fans will be asked to exit the first United Bank Center then re-enter with their session two tickets tickets for that tournament are live on gobuffsgo.com and they can also be found at the wt ticket office if you haven't already go follow us on twitter and instagram at wt the rundown and like subscribe and hit the bell that's all for this week's episode thank you guys so much for tuning in i will see you next time i'm corian davis and you're watching the rundown